What's happening, everyone? Welcome to another Thursday night airbrush down dirty tricks. Hope everyone is doing well. I thought I heard my dog walking upstairs, but no. <laughs> uh, it's 8 p.m. on a Thursday. Let's see who's here. I think we should be having audio now. Let's see. Do we have audio? Let's check. It says I have it on my end. Do we have it on your end? Let's see now. It should be back on now. If not, that's it. Do we have audio? Testing one, two, three. All good? Okay, good. I think we have audio. Yeah. Good. There we go. Yep. So I just want to make sure. Thank you for that. So welcome, everyone. Tonight we are going to do a little pink realistic fire, a little hot pink realistic fire in a skull. If you saw the bike I did the other day, everyone really seemed to enjoy it, so I figured... What the hell? Let's do a uh, live feed on it and turn this into a nice how-to. So what I've done is I've got a panel all prepped, uh, ready to go. Got some stencils cut out. And uh, so we're going to get started in a minute. I want to thank everyone for showing up. We've got 21 people in here already. Uh, let me see who's over on the world of Facebook. And go from there. Yep. we got Shane Quick over there. Kaylee was just here getting set up. Uh, she's going back downstairs. She's still under the weather. Uh, after last week's live feed, we did another test for COVID, and she was COVID positive. So uh, she was definitely sick last week, and she's still kind of feeling the effects. She's kind of over it, but uh, she's still a little worn out. So it's been a long week. It's school vacation week for her, so that's kind of a bummer. But um, that's what's happening there. So uh, we're going to get started on this. Let me show you what we got going on here. So I got this lovely panel already done, sprayed out and ready to go. Actually, I'm going to bring this down just a bit. There we go. Bring it over. There we go. That looks pretty good. And so what I've done here, this is an aluminum panel. This is one of those uh, Aluma core, so it's a PVC core, uh, but it's aluminum front and back on both sides and prep this down with um, 600. I did, actually I'm sorry, I did 400. Then I did a base coat of a pink sealer I made up using the Createx Autoborn sealer. And then what I did after that is I took um, this older color. This is an older color. I'm not sure if they still make it or not. Uh, this is the Porn Star Pink. Porn Star Pink was an older color. It's a really, you know, fuchery, almost to a purple. Uh, pink color has a lot of purple uh, sparkle in it. Uh, and then what I did is I put some some purple uh, gem shift flare over the top of it. So it has a little bit of sheen. So you won't really see it here, but it's a really cool base color to work off of. And uh, yeah, this is all Kratex colors. And we're going to work it from there. This is similar to what I did in the bike. The bike was a little bit more magenta uh, pink. This has a little bit more hot pink kind of tone to it. Um, but yeah, this was all Createx colors. So um, we're going to get started on this in just a second. There's going to be a question. So we got 30 people in here right now. What's the inspiration for this one? Carl, so like I said, this was a bike I just did. Um, so if you saw the... If you saw the ad for it, let me show you this here, if I can find it. Da -da -da. Oh, oh, oh. So if you saw the skull bike I did the other day, this was kind of what I'm working with. Uh, I should have brought a picture of it. But this is what we're going to do. So basically I'm going to take a skull. Um, I got this really... You know, I use it quite a bit. Uh, guys might have seen there's a, a website called Tattoo Smart. Uh, Tattoo Smart has lots of brushes for Procreate and Photoshop and other things. And they have this one thing called Pile of, uh, pile of Skulls. And it's like three different color variations, like a backlit, like, like a molten skull, this one, and then like a black and white. Um, of almost every position you'd want for a skull. They're really high res. They're really cool. Um, so I like working with this quite a bit for a natural skull. 
because it's very well done. It's got a very nice texture to it. Uh, it's well lit. So I'm going to use this guy here. And I'll show you how to do a basic cutout, uh, how to make your own stencil for this. And we are going to do a pink skull I mean, and pink fire. So let's talk about fire for a second. All right. Um, when anyone does fire, we typically do, um, you know, the orange, red, and blue. You know, the orange or red, maybe a little purplish off to the side, all the way to white. And then we've done blue fires, and blues has like a white to blue to purple transition. With the pink fire, it's very similar. You have that whitish pink hot center all the way out to a purple. That's kind of your color spectrum. That's kind of what I want to talk to you today about is this here. So this is just a regular match that, I, you know, kind of matchstick I took into Photoshop. Um, and what I want to talk about was, so if you look the way the fire's done, I just changed the color to all these purple tones. This is kind of a good reference. And the key to airbrushing fire, especially on a darker surface, is you don't want to have that white, that hot spot floating in the middle of nowhere by itself, no matter what, even if it's on black and you're doing yellow fire. You want to step everything in. So if you look at this matchstick, you'll see that the purple's on the outside, and then it comes into more of a magenta, then a pinkish color, then a hot pink, and then a white. Everything steps inside each other. So Mike Lavelle's rule for realistic fire and his true fire was always loose to tight, dark to light. What he meant was you want that dark outer to be the loosest section, and then the next step in gets a little bit tighter uh, and a little bit to a brighter color, and so on and so forth up into the white. So everything steps inside. If you look at this match, you'll see that it does that. You have that kind of pink, that purplish dark glow into the black, uh, and then it goes into the brighter colors. And our case here, we're going to be on this pink surface. So if you're on black, it's really easy because you get that contrast right away. When you're on a, a kind of a mid-tone surface, you're going to have to create that dark, so you're going to need some purple outer. Uh, so we're going to talk about how we do that in that first layer. Um, so let's kind of get started. I'm going to do my best to uh, try to read comments. Like I said, it's just me. Kaylee's not here tonight. Um, so let me just kind of, if I miss your comments, I apologize. I'm going to do what I can do. So we got Dennis, Jesus, Blue, Mr. Voss, Cody, Gary, Aussie Pete, Carl. So we got some people. Oh, thanks for coming from Australia. So is it probably afternoon time there, Australia, depending where you're at? Um, right now we're at 8 p.m., a little after 8 p.m. here on East Coast U.S. time. So let's get rocking. Everyone like this idea of what we got going on here? <laughs> You're a little sleep deprived, or am I? I might be too. All right, so I've already cut these, so let's talk about that. I'm going to bring up this really quick here. So you have your the skull image. So what I first do is I go around, and this is just regular nice, nice quality printer paper. Nothing like super high end. Nothing. But not like cheap rag either. Just a nice, like, you know, laser uh, inkjet printer paper. You know, good quality. That seems to hold better. They don't curl up as much when they get wet, especially in the water-based uh, realm. Just a nice paper. If, you, if you're if you going to want to use the stencil over and over again quite a bit, like not just kind of like a one project thing, um, you can get like, you know, business card stock or card stock, so it's a little heavier. Uh, and that's going to hold up more and more over time. A little more difficult to cut. But you're just going to cut all your basics out, your basic shape out. Okay. And now you have a positive negative. Just like my pack of skulls, you, now you have a positive negative. And then you're going to go in, and depending on what you want to do, you can cut. You know, if you want like a lot of little details, you can cut this inner... You know, the inner eye, like, you know, so the inner cracks on the little stuff and go in all the little details, depending on what you want to cut out, okay? So what I've done, just to save a little time here, is I've got a couple different cuts. So this is the cut I've done. And I'm going to show you the back side of it so you can see. Here, let me bring up, I'm going to bring up the skull image itself. So what I've done is I've cut the eyes 
I've cut the nose, I left the septum in, I've cut the teeth locations, and like I've cut the bottom and I could kind of fold this back and get that. I can fold this out and get that if I want. And there's little extra cuts here. I've cut through here like this so I can fold things back and there's some cracks and little things like that, okay? So you can kind of get an idea what I've done there. What I've also done, because the way I know I'm gonna do this fire is I'm gonna have most, of, this is the majority of the part of the skull that's gonna show. So I'm gonna have the fire kind of coming out of the side of his head and out from under the teeth. So I've cut another one, the same thing, the same insets here, but I got rid of the bottom location, okay? So this is kind of how I would approach the cuts and you'll be good to go from there. Let's talk about color. So I already talked about the different fire. Uh, let me bring that back up here. So these are the colors. So I kind of mixed up my palette of what I'm gonna do here. Uh, and see, Spirit Cuffs for Sarah Live Stream, thank you for what you do. I love doing it. Um, Dave the Bug, Gregory, how you doing, man? Good evening. So I've done a mix of a few different colors. I've done um, Kratix Candy 2Os, and I've done illustration colors, okay, and illustration opaques. So my first two I've done is, this is my main color, and this is the um, Wicked Opaque, and I've mixed some of the magenta illustration into it to make a nice pink color, because I don't want to use pure, pure white for most of it. I'm going to go in with mostly pure white, and I may mix a little pink in this at the very end, but this is like the very littlest bit. The majority is going to be done with this pink. And this is something I learned a long time ago, not to overdo it with white uh, right off the bat. Especially because we're going to try some dark colors right off the start. Uh, and I've mixed illustration colors and candy colors. So the two candies I've done for the Candy 2Os is I've done uh, the 5649 Deep Purple. And I've done the Sunset Magenta. That's going to give me that nice bright pink. These are candies. Uh, if you're not doing candies, you can do... Illustration colors, because they're almost they're not as translucent, but they are transparent. So I've done illustration violet and illustration magenta. Okay, so I'm going to use all these. I got them all mixed up. Uh, and then what I did for my darkest one, I took the illustration violet and I added some illustration black to it to make it dark. So again, I'm not going to use pure, pure white and I'm not going to use pure, pure black. Okay, and that's kind of my MO, as most of you know. So let's get started. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do this guy off to the side and I'm gonna have the fire kind of come off him like that. And because this Vision Air system is nice steel, my magnets will still kind of stick through. Um, and that's sticking through the aluminum panel and grabbing the steel. So some decently strong magnets and go from there. So that's gonna keep it in place. If you don't have that, you could just ball some tape up. I've done it in other feeds and kind of stick it on there. Um, Let's see what we got. All right, so basic fire. Let's talk real quick. This is where everyone has kind of the most trouble because they want to do a lot of squiggles or overuse the stencils. Um, this is where I kind of just, I got my pink here and I loosely sketch where I want my fire. You know, it sounds really easy. It kind of is when you've been doing it for a while. But I'm just doing a simple map of where I want things to go. I want it to come off the head here and just give it a little wiggle. And that's moving a little bit. That's fine. I haven't done much with it yet. And that's kind of the bulk of where I want the fire. I'll have a little bit of tailing off here. Okay. But it's just a really loose sketch. Okay. And this is done with this pink color. Okay. So I've done this with the pink. This is something you want to practice and just kind of get used to that movement. And you want to, you know, get that wrist movement. Kind of have some S curves to everything. And this, this is going to be really loose. So I just kind of fade it in. Because I'm going to go over this with mostly purple. And just really get it. Loosen in the background. Notice I'm, I haven't even touched the stencil yet. Okay, and just getting it loose in there. And it's going to glow around here. And we'll have it come off his head a little bit. And maybe a little bit come here. And it's just a sketch. It's just a sketch. 
Is Steve here? Did I miss Mr. Leahy? Hope you had a safe travel home, my friend. Um, this is the hardest part for most people, to keep it loose and keep that movement. There is a lot of confidence in your airbrushing ability and just to kind of let things happen. Um, but I've done this so many times, I kind of have a natural flow to it. But if you notice what I'm doing, I'm radiating from the skull and then it's coming down. Okay, and it's dissipating as it gets further away. If you look at the flame lick uh, over, I can't, there we go, this thing here, the p image, you can see how the, it starts at the base of the flame. Yeah, I'll bring up this image. It starts at the base and it's thick and wide. As it goes away, it gets thinner and tapers. Okay, so that's the same kind of flow we're doing. And that's really, you know, you just want to have that kind of pull. Said I'm not even using the stencil. When I first started, I used the stencil a lot. And then more and more I practiced, the less I used it, the more and more I was fortunate to be around Mr. Lavalley. I saw how little he used the stencils. And if you watched a lot of his feeds, you'd notice he didn't use them very much. He might go in, or I might go in at this point and say, okay, I like this one. If I find something I really like, I'm going to take my stencil. This is one of his uh, uh, True Fire curves. This has got a, year, a lot of buildup on it. And I might find that one. I like that. I can define that one a little bit more. And if I like this one here, I can define that. Maybe a little bit here. Uh, again, I'm not doing much. I'm not doing much. It's just a little bit here and there. Okay. Um... It's kind of moved on me. But again, it's not too crucial if it moves around because this, like I said, this is the initial kind of, the initial setting, the initial glow. This is mainly going to have the purple candy over it or the magenta. Uh, I might not use a lot of the candy to the very end because at this point I can, I don't need a full transparency of the candy. Oh, Michael, that's, uh, I got to do both. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep up. So, Mr. Stanton, is that 100? Thanks, sir. Much appreciated. Uh, the other thing you'll notice I do is I do a lot of flood strokes. And flood strokes are kind of scary. Um, they were a lot easier to do back in the day with solvent, but the water base is finally cut off, especially the wicked opaque. It's got enough body where I can get that nice flood. So, it's almost like a, a very sharp dagger stroke. And I get that wiggle, okay? So you can definitely get it. Um, probably don't want to use a micron for this. You probably want to use like a regular Eclipse or something like that. Uh, the Eclipse is going to give let you keep the paint thicker than the micron will. And it's going to let you kind of get that body of paint out. We're going to give a nice eye in the center. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch the purple. Oh, but I've got that glow started. Now, you know, I've got the glow started. I've got it established. The direction it's going to go in. And just really kind of have fun at this point with it. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off. This is why I did the two stencils. So I've got the basic body of them. But I know I want for skull. I want a lot of it to be coming from like kind of out from behind his temple. And then we're gonna have some coming out from under the mouth as well. Just to kind of get it started. So, Facebook's going to be really hard for me to do both because it's just me here tonight. So, if I miss your comments, um, do your best to keep repeating them or go over to the YouTube side because it's a lot easier. The way it streams, I can, I can see it a lot easier. Okay, so, the nice thing about doing it this way is I can soften things up now and kind of where things are going to get out of. And just kind of build that 
shape. So I'm not overdoing it. Remember, it's really easy to add more fire, but it's very hard to take it away. So you definitely want to start out um, loose and then start tightening it up. This is also a good time if you're going to do some texturing in the skull, we can do some texturing now. I can use some Gerald Mendez texture effects before I start kind of bringing the darker color in. Because this darker color is going to serve two purposes. It's going to tone down this fire and it's going to give me some uh, detail areas of where this is going to go. Like I said, it's just me tonight uh, with Kaylee still not feeling well. Uh, for those who just joined, she did have COVID. She's getting over it now. And uh, so she's had a kind of a rough week. Not horrible. I mean, she's been vaccinated and boosted, so it didn't really hit her too hard, but hard enough where she hasn't really felt like doing much. So tonight she came in like last week and just kind of helped me get started. And then it's just going to be me from here on out. So what I've done is I've just kind of shaped the skull on where he's going to be. Let me bring up that five skull reference here. So you can kind of see. So see how the lights you know, on the front of the skull. I'm going to do a lot of that now and just, you know, just loose on where it's going to be. But you see what I've done right here? There's enough flow here to just keep everything in line and just show the flow. I'm not trying to like... You know, I'm not trying to dance too much because I'm looking at my shape. If I had a long, like a really long panel, uh, I'd probably start hooking the fire down and up and breaking it apart and letting it kind of dance a little bit. This is short, so i got to get from the bulk of the fire and get some shape right to the end. Uh, and if I go too much, it's just going to look like a big blo blob of fire. It's not going to have any definition. So you want to try to keep some movement. Remember that S-curve. Just kind of keep that flow. Let the fire flow off each other, just like when you're talking about um, traditional old school flames. Traditional old school flames had that, you know, that same natural curl. They were heavy at the base and they tapered as they went down. You had the bellies and things like that. So keep that in mind um, the same way. So you kind of have that flow and you see some natural shapes of like, if you were to, if I was to tape this out, you know, I wish I had a piece of clear acetate because you can actually see you know, an old school flame shape in here and how it would come around, you know, and go, you know, the, the, the same premise is there. Um, and this is stuff we talk about a lot at the Airbrush Rendezvous uh, and things like that, which we got coming up. Uh, Airbrush Rendezvous is coming up in three weeks, guys. Uh, we are pretty tight on space. I know me and Rhino are nearly sold out on it. So if anyone's looking to go to that, you got to, get a hold of Dave now and let him know uh, because the spots are pretty much filling up for most of the classes. So uh, if you're interested, definitely, definitely get on that. And that is going to be, uh, let's see here. I have it. Da, 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 da. Thought I had it somewhere. Airbrush Rendezvous, May 12th through the 15th. So if you guys are interested, definitely uh, definitely get on that. That's coming up very, very soon. Uh, that's at Coast Airbrush in Anaheim, California. So me and Rhino are going to actually, we're going to incorporate a similar lesson with the with the, with the with like a hot pink uh, fire, but it'll be on black, it'll be bigger. There's going to be traditional flames, graphics mixed into it, some other stuff. So we're going to show you how to integrate this into a more automotive design. Uh, that's one of the three classes we not one of the three classes one of the three lessons we have for the program we got some really cool stuff planned all right let's see all right so i'm going to take my illustrator like I said, i'm not going to use the candies just yet um I'm gonna use those when I wanna, I use the candies when I wanna colorize and like bring the dynamic brightness up because that's what candies do, they let things show through. Um, so I'm just gonna 
hold off on the candies yet. So right now, this is the this was the purple. Okay. Uh, this is the purple. Which one do we got here? This is illustration violet. Okay. So I'm going to use this to kind of detail where like the eye sockets are going to be. Okay. So I'm going to start just using this to shape everything out. So I know where the skull inner details are going to be. So I got where the teeth are going to be. And what I've done is I've made some cutbacks here so I can fold that back and get that in. Because I'm going to do mostly freehand once, once I'm out. that here I I had the other folds but I since I got both stencils it's gonna be easier just to do this because they line up to each other Just got the basics, where the base is going to be. Just like with my pack of skulls, I tell you, don't over stencil things, okay? Um, just use it enough so you can blend it out really easy. So you said, if you don't have candy colors, the illustration colors work beautifully for this. Sometimes I like them better because I can get to the color a little quicker than the candies. Um, but the candies have a different look. But for this stage, I don't really need the candies because this is the... Basically, think about this as an underpainting. And I'm almost kind of shadowing the fire. Let me see if I can hear the difference with the candies here. So this is the candy. The candy is a little softer. But I'm not going to use too much of this. I'm, you know, I would kind of go back through in the end with it. I'm going to use mostly the magentas because I want to use the purple for most of the detail. But I can establish some of this now of where the, the darker sets are going to be. Notice what I'm doing is I'm putting the darkest color in that outer area. Okay, that outer section where, you know, you see in that outer flame, okay, just like the flame reference, that, you know, matchstick reference. And I'm not worried about losing some of the detail because I'm going to go back in. A lot of this just gets pushed in the background, okay. And then we take the magenta candy. And you'll see that a lot of this just gets really pushed back, okay? So that's the magenta candy, or I can use the magenta illustration color. They both roughly do the same thing. So now I'm kind of going to push that back and push everything back to the background, okay? This feed uh, isn't the same without the pink cleaner. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry Michelle's not here. So, you know, realistically, you're almost getting rid of what you painted. And it just serves as background tone, okay? It's when you clear it, it'll be there. But it's really just pushed back. Like I said, this is the illustration color. 
right now. Or you can do candy. Whichever you choose. It's very on the video it's almost negligible to tell the difference. Um, a lot of times it depends more of your background color, which you should use. But you'll see how in the in this image here, how you know you know toned down it is. And it's just pushed into the background. Have you ever used a Badger Renegade Chrome? Yeah, I've used a Chrome. I've messed with them. Um, they're they're a nice gun. They're a very well made gun. Um, I'm not a fan of, and it's not a it's not a slam on Badger. The way their body airbrush body is shaped, the trigger assembly. In my hand, I just don't like the action of them. Um, I don't like the feel of them. But they are an amazingly well made gun. Um, it's just not my preference. But they are a great machine. Uh, you know, I get, I try those guns, and I like them, then I put it, I water back in my hand, and it just feels more natural. It's just the shape I prefer. Um, but it's not a dig on Badger whatsoever. All right, so, see, that's, you know, that's done, okay? That's all pushed back. I have my roadmap, okay? Um, so that's kind of the first two steps, and now is where I start deciding the skull, and I start going in... And now I'm going to really kind of detail up where that skull is going to have its light sourcing. Okay. And let me pull up the skull reference here. Dun, 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 dun. Doing this all myself is a little tricky. Okay. So, you know, if you look up, the skull has got a very bright forehead. And I could also go in and I can bring some of this texture back in to the skull. And I want to have a little gap between where the fire is. And I'm just going to you know, basically start painting the light, the highlights, okay? Hey, Warlock, how you doing, bud? So, you know, basically the light's going to be on the cheekbone. And you can see that in the reference image, really clear. It's really bright there. It comes down you know, really strong. I want to keep it really strong there let it dissipate off the edge. I don't want to have too much back here because I want to have some fire. Oh, well, sounds good. Sorry for the loss, man. Uh, that's always tough. This is that same pinkish white color. And I'm just going to hit where these highlights would be and just really kind of bring out the skull. And I wish I could see the Facebook side easier, but it's just not really working. I'm going to see if I can turn my phone and maybe I can get a better look at it. Sorry, guys. Never easy. Never easy. Here we go. See if the chat comes up there. We'll see if that works any better. Hey, Larry. Yeah, for some reason it's got like close captioning on. It's doing all this stuff and it's really annoying. I don't like the way it is on the phone. So do what I can, guys. Sorry. Like I said, click over on the link. Facebook's just such a pain to do live feeds now. So I do everything over on YouTube. It's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing, and I can I don't have to have as many issues. Because eventually, if this keeps up, I'm not I'm gonna barely do them on Facebook. I'm just gonna stick with YouTube because it's really gotten cumbersome to do it over there. Let's bring back that eye. 
But notice, I'm still keeping everything loose, okay? I'm not doing any crazy major details. I'm just keeping it loose and freehand. Um, the cheekbone here. And this is that this is that um, opaque white mixed with uh, a little bit of the pink. See how white that looks? This is what it looks like. It looks pink pink, but when you put it next to a darker pink, it looks more white. Yep, bid is still at 100. Thank you, Blue. Like, if you wanted to, if you wanted to bring in, you can bring in the outer piece, like this. And just get that in here first, if you want. Like, if you wanted that hard edge, see that? You could just kind of establish that right now. And this is, you know, whether you're using my skull, someone else's skulls, paper cut skulls, the premises don't change. It's just the skull you're using. Okay. So, get in, get in. Remember, I want the fire, I want the fire to come out from under these teeth here. So I'm almost gonna get rid of this kind of back section of the skull. You know, it can be there, but it's mostly, you know, the fire behind the skull kind of shapes it. So that's almost gonna be gone when it's done. All right, so I just got that a little bit going. Oh, honey, have a good night. Thank you for popping in. Appreciate it. Pepto White. Yeah, that's a good description for it. Pepto White. Maybe that'll be the new name because really in person, that's kind of what it looks like. It's like Pepto Bismol Pink. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of a good tone. So the teeth. For all you guys who have trouble with teeth, I've been airbrushing 30 something years. I don't have as much problem with teeth just because I do it all the time. Um, but what you can do is you could just basically cut them out. Like a row. Basically, like, basically make some dentures. <laughs> so look, so I have the teeth. I can just pull them down. Now I have both. Jamie, this is all done in Createx. I have a mix of Createx illustration colors and Candy 2.0 colors. And the base coat is uh, Createx Porn Star Pink. So what you can do for the teeth is from here, from each center of the tooth, go up. Okay, that's going to give you the socket of where the tooth lies. A little soft dagger strokes. Get them away. And that's where the teeth are. And now from each tooth itself, because I have top and bottom, because the way this is going to be lit. You know, because I have that, I can I have the tops and bottoms now. I can just kind of come off it like that. But the teeth are, you know, just floating. This is where I'm going to freehand them. And I'm just going to put the highlight, basically the center cast like where it's cast a light on the tooth. Okay, with that nice kind of soft dagger stroke. So he's gonna be missing a tooth here, so that's just gonna be a socket. He's missing a tooth here. And we got two teeth back here. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have the teeth all kind of napped in. Remember, I'm still doing loose. Warlock at 200. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm trying to get my apprenticeship. To... Hey, Jeff, how's it going, man? So there we go. All right, again, still loose. Nothing crazy for detail, just loose and mapped out with this pink color. But if you look really close at it, let me uh, see if I can swap to the other screen. So you can see, still see the pink through it. You know, because you have a straight on camera and angle camera, the lighting is gonna play differently in the studio. So, you know, you kinda gotta look at both and it's kind of in between. Um, so, now we got the cracks. The key to fire is don't try to fire and even skulls at the stages. Don't try to get too much detail too fast. Because, you know, you're just going to lose most of it. But this is where I can now start playing with fire, <laughs> literally. And I don't need to copy everything I did. Uh, I can make some new kind of shapes and just kind of stay with what I had there. Like, I want that coming out. I love this little piece here, which was under there before. I'm going to keep that. And just work off of it. And if I want some littler shapes, because you can get some tighter ones, this is where my little, little pocket graphics come in. I can get some smaller kind of fire. And this level is going to really take over what was already done. You know, that other layer is pretty much non existent, but it's there. When you clear it and you look through this paint job, it all kind of layers through. So remember that. Even though it's like, oh, you killed a lot of it. I did, but you, that other level was essential to get the flow and the step, the stage for what I'm doing now. And it's under there and it will show through in the clear. Okay. But this takes a lot of practice, man. This is not, you know... I remember watching Mike do it, and, you know, like, I'm pretty quick at it. Mike was probably, shoot, man, he was at least ten times faster. Man, he just, and just looked like he didn't care. And he did. It's just, he was so confident and so loose in the strokes, it just really just was amazing to watch. Um, you know... His was way looser than mine. Mine's still fairly, you know, structured. It's got some shapes to it, which I like. Sometimes I don't. Um, but you kind of find your own way. You find curves that work. You find different pieces of stencils that work. Um... And this is kind of that stage where it's like, oh, it's now it's back to where it was beginning, but it's not because now you have this purple that's set up for that. So just like when you, you know, when you look at this, you look at that fire reference again, it's stepped in. Okay, so basically that you know I could have painted the whole background as purple, which I kind of did, um, and let it come out from there. And again, we're going to push this back with mainly, with mainly purple. Yeah, Jeff, my, my fire definitely has kind of a smokier uh, curl to it than uh, like Mike's was looser. Um, 
I can't pronounce his last name right now. Steve. Oh, which I don't know. He has a W. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I don't want to. I'm not even going to attempt to say it because I'm going to butcher it. Um, his fire is amazing. He's got such a cool look to it. Uh, and that's what I love about the realistic fire and the true fire like Mike did was once you get comfortable with it, everyone kind of gets a signature to it. Their own kind of look. Even like old school flames, you know. I can I can walk into a show and I can tell an old school Kelsey Martin flame job from a Dave Perowitz flame job from a um, a George Barris flame job. You know, everyone kind of it's the same technique, but everyone gets their own kind of look to it. Actually, speaking of George Barris, I got a really um, no, not not Wizard, the other Steve, not Wizard. Pinstriping Wizard, it's the other guy. He does a lot of baggers and stuff, and I always get him confused sometimes. But hi, Michelle. I just noticed your comment, and then I noticed it was you. So, I, a cool thing, uh, speaking of George Barris, which is just awesome, I got a call the other day from a guy up in Concord, New Hampshire who happens to have a George Barris 1943, 42 Plymouth of some kind. I forget which uh, the exact thing, but it was a car that was chopped and channeled and built by George Barris and flamed by George or in his shop. Um, and it needs a little TLC, so I'm going to go and uh, restore the flame job because they got some you know, blistering and some rust came through some panels, so they're taking care of that. And then I'm going to go and... Duplicate the flames. I've already gone out and made a pattern of it. So that's really cool to be invited over to, you know, basically bring one of George Barris's cars back to, you know, new again. But yeah, so you can still see all that purple under there, but I, I need to do that first layer to get this. To work okay so you definitely gotta do your roadmap and get things kind of laid out and planned and that's where the whole you know Mike Lavalley loose to tight dark to light came from okay that's what it means it's like you start with that loose and even though you have white you do the darker color first yes with Nelski <laughs> with Nielski. yeah I don't know how to pronounce it uh, and I apologize. People butcher my name, so if I butcher someone else's, whatever. I'm used to it, so. It happens. But like I said, this is the fun stage for me, man. This is where you can just really kind of work it out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the magenta illustration color and start detailing it. And then I will use the purple. Uh, my Gillette met George before he sold Batman Bill number one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I met George quite a few times at different various shows, and just super, super great guy. Fine art by Herrera. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. But, yep, yeah, just got that basic. Now, this is nice and loose. You know, it's... it's... Okay, Steve... Wisnowski. Oh, yeah, okay. Wisnowski. I'm like Mike Wisnowski. Mike Wisnowski. Cheers, everyone. Hope everyone's having a good evening. Okay. Illustration. So we're going to do illustration magenta right now before I go to the purple. Oh, and when I go to the purple, I did get something really cool. As long as you can see it, I got that the bl uh, black devil from Marissa, which is the that forked end cap. It's bitching because I can actually still pick the needle if I wanted to uh, without taking the cap off. So it saves the needle, and I can see it when I'm really close. Really, really cool. Okay, so, so now, 
this is where I kind of change that dark to light. I am going to do the lighter color here and just kind of build the tone before I go dark because this is not fire, this is actually shaping the skull. So this is the magenta. I don't want to go to purple. I want to tone it with the illustration magenta and kind of start building all my shapes and details. See? It's like the h and s you know, cap. Yeah, I think h and s makes a similar one. Um, so now I'm going to tone that in. And that leaves me room. So watch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put some details. We'll put some cracks coming off the head there. I'm going to do the cracks coming down here. Okay, so by doing that in this color, that now sets up for the purple the other way. Because I'm not trying to do a glow now. Now I'm trying to like carve a skull. So I almost flip it. Uh, what mono airbrush? Uh, that fits on either of the Micron, any of the Micron models. Um, so this is on my Takumi one, but it fits on the SB, it fits on the CM, the custom CM, and the Micron, it's that size. I don't think, I don't know if it'll fit on a non, yeah, let's try it. I think the air cap, the, you know, the needle cap is different size, but let's see. Does it fit on like an Eclipse? I don't think it will. It does actually. It fits on the eclipse as well. I just don't know if it'll uh, how to react. So I'll give it a shot another time. But it'll fit on all the Iwatas uh, or the ones that are knockoffs of Iwatas. Because they copied mostly the same threads on everything. So now I got the purple here. I mean the magenta. Now I go to the purple because now I can darken in here and tone it. See? And it takes less to get to that darker color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one darker. I'm going to add black to it to get my final. But that gives me a nice transition. And again, this is the illustration with Jenta. This isn't candy. But it gives me the flexibility to just slowly work the details. Okay. So I'm going to go back to that illustration with Jenta. Well, we got quite a bit of guys in here. 61 people. We got a few people over on Facebook. Thank you, everyone, for popping in, sharing it, liking it. You know, that really helps this. Uh, watch it after the fact. Share with other people. The more this gets shared, the more um, basically the way the algorithm works, I'll start getting bumped up on the ratings. More people will see it, and it gets easier to make videos. I'm start toning this in. Because what I'll do is I'll tone this in, then I can, when I want to get it real pink, I'll wash over it. Uh, da, da, da. My badger running your velocity, gravity, and spirit size beams. I have four cap. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about badgers earlier. Very well made gun. I was never a fan of their build style, but um, it's just, that's just personal preference. That's, you know, Ford and Chevy right there. Now we can really just play in here for a while, get all this tone. Oh, 
Welcome back. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming in. Week to week. As so many of you guys do. You know, it's funny. Some weeks, you know, I'm honest. Like Some weeks I just don't want to do it. Because <laughs> it just takes so much time. I'm like, oh, I'll just... I'll do it next week. And then I'm like, oh, so many people are going to want to do it. And I make, I just, you know, because I've already done my, you know, eight-hour day of painting bikes. <laughs> and uh, I get to this, and I'm like, uh, maybe I'll just, maybe I'm too tired tonight. And then I like seeing you all. So just get going on it. And then once I get started on it, I'm happy to keep going. Problem uh, with the likes and live feeds is people get so into what you. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that stuff helps. You know, sharing it, talking to people about it, it helps. You know, eventually, you hopefully will attract some of the some other sponsors, and you might have to deal with a commercial or two. Uh, but that's going to help me in doing it. Because, you know, like I said, even on the simplest live feed, and this one was pretty simple. I didn't have to do a lot ahead of time. Um, but I still started, you know, I painted the panel this afternoon. That was an hour or so, you know, and, you know, maybe an hour and a half. And then get all like the lighting set up and get the images and the reference images set. You know, there's always probably about four or five hours at minimum into this two hour feed or so. So the more you guys share and like and do all that, it just helps me out. And not just me, other guys doing it. Steve and Doug Dore and everyone who spends the time to do live feeds. And, you know, we ain't doing it for the money. Realistically, I mean, there's an end game. Hopefully, there'll be some money in it. And I'm fortunate that so many of you guys, you know, bid and buy these paintings, and that that also helps. Um, but I really like doing it just because I get to talk to you guys and chat a little bit. And see what's happening and kind of keep things going in the industry and you know see what works see what people you know are asking for I kind of I, I browse around the forums a lot and see what what people are asking for some weeks if I don't know what I'm gonna paint and I kind of pop around some of the airbrush forums of different groups and uh, just see what people say hey how do I do this how do I do that and then I'll, I'll go through and start kind of figuring out what I'm going to do for a feed sometimes. But see, now with that light, with this magenta, I can go in and I can start carving. The magenta illustration covers a little quicker than the, um, the candy. But the candy, I can run through a heavier airbrush so I can cover more area. So I'm just, I'm kind of getting out here. I can even put some of this pink magenta flame and fire like over the, the porn star pink. And it's just gonna, you know, you can't even really see what I just did. But it shows up uh, on the cleared side. I didn't think I like the side feed, but I do. Yeah, I go back and forth. Like, I still love the straight up, but, you know, I love the side feed for so many things. Um, depends on the painting. Sometimes on a motorcycle, I'll bump the feed. Or I'll have to switch to this side. Um, because I, if you notice, I kind of paint a little crooked. I don't paint straight on. I kind of tip, and I kind of did that when I started doing videos. And it's just kind of become a habit now. Um, so...
you know, the nice thing with the straight up, it doesn't matter left or righty, you know, because uh, it's in the middle, so it doesn't matter. Um, I remember the first time I sat and worked, me and Michael Learn worked together, it was I'm watching him paint, and I'm shaking my head because I'm like, this doesn't look right. Painting backwards, man. You're on the wrong side. All right. Purple candy. Let me take, I'm going to get some purple candy again. Mr. Mendez! Mr. Mendez is in the house. This is the deep purple candy. I'm going to hit some of these dark areas on the outer edge just to kind of build a little, just a little bit more contrast up. I'll bring this, I'll bring this one up. It looks a little black on screen. It's really, you know, when you clear it, the purple really shows through. Um, but it has that kind of black flop a little bit. Here. Just a little bit. And then we'll take the magenta candy. I'm going to just tone some of this. And I don't paint directly on the white. I kind of paint on the left and right of it. That way the center still stays a little brighter. Yeah, the side feed airbrushes, you can go either side. You know, these, it doesn't matter because it's center, but the side feeds, I don't think any brand has it dedicated to one side except for the old school Pasha AB turbos. They were one sided, we had the you know, lefty or righty. But you can take this cap, you take this off and just swap it. Uh, and um, the Badgers, I believe, are the same way, and so are the other brands. Put some purple out here, and if you want, I could take the skull itself before and just kind of darken outside a little bit and shape it. All right. So now, again, now I've. I've done the next step. So I went from really loose and dark purple to a little tighter and then pushed the purple magenta. Now I'm gonna go in um, and I'm gonna carve a lot of the dark detail with the purple here. Okay, because I've already got that magenta established. So now I can go in with the purple and work inside it and get that detail. And then I'm gonna add black to this purple and kind of get that final dark. Okay, see how that's working? And we'll put some core shadows here. Okay, just get a little bit, we'll enhance these cracks in the eye a little bit. And then we'll go back in for the final white highlights and things like that. Uh, current bid on this, if I, unless I miss something, Still Warlock at 200. If anyone else is interested, uh, I'll keep an eye out. Again, I'm stepping inside. So now I'm going to purple and I'm kind of working inside the magenta. And then I'll add that black and I'll, I'll make it strict, uh, make it more detailed from there. Nikki, much appreciated. I'm about to try Tim's custom airbrush. I'm trying to keep up with Gerald. <laughs> yeah, and this color is really cool. Uh, it's gonna have a lot of sparkle to it. And I'll probably I'll put another layer, like some sparkle lesson over the top of this before I do the final clear. And that'll really just make this pop. And 
and I didn't hit record on this. Well, it records on YouTube, but um, I'm going to try to edit this down to more of a straightforward how-to without a lot of the jabbering and talking. But. No, it can never go wrong with pink. It's funny, I don't do a lot of it. Like that, the one I did the other day, that pink fire like in Skull that kind of led to me doing this one. I mean, that's the first one I've done in years, actually. I love the way it looks, too. It's actually really fun to paint. My two favorite fire colors to paint is blue fire and uh, jump over to Facebook, it looks more pink. In here on YouTube. Yeah, it's can't really tell depending on the camera angle because they're all at different spots, so they all catch the light different. I could really benefit from a good lighting guy to come here at some point and kind of set the lights up. Because I did this all myself. I don't, I'm, you know, I've done what I can to make it. But that's something you could spend days just messing with lights. Let's see now that tone, I can just kind of work that in. And then when I go back in for this fire, it's just all going to pop. Green would be awesome too. Yeah, green fire done. Yeah. Daniel Powers? Where is Mr. Powers? I didn't see him pop in. There he is. What's going on, man? I want you pink is my thing. Yeah, actually, man, he, yeah, you did some awesome pink stuff. Um, I remember, was, was they on, I think it was on Cars or Trucks. I know you did a video on it. Those are great, man. Now, I've always loved doing the pink fire. I remember when Mike was first doing it, and we were all really first doing it because we're all old. Is I did a pink, did a water droplet pink background with a rose and pink fire on it. The fire wasn't very good. The tone was cool, and uh, I got a comment. That was the first time I got a comment from Mike saying, "Ooh, pink fire, that's cool." And then he, you know. <laughs> I'm sure he probably did pink fire prior to it and was being nice. But he's like, oh, I never thought of that. And this was really early on. Uh, that's back in the old airbrush.com days. Dating ourselves there. What are you drinking? I am drinking Whistle Pig 10 Year this evening. Mm. You do resemble that remark. Shoot, I could pull your DVD out right now. <laughs> Yeah, the pink illustration girls. You had the pink girls, and then you had the. It was like a teal, like an aqua color teal, or just was it like, was like an oriental blue color. They were. I think it was the one. With the, she had butterfly wings. I think that was one of the ones you did. Damn, it was just awesome. It was breathtaking. And pink on black is one thing. Pink on pink's even funner because it just. There's so much going on. Um, but pink on black, you can get, like, my reference image here, you can just get that really super glow. Because um, when you're pink on pink, you're never going to have as much pop. Because that pop, that fire pop, is all about contrast. So the darker your background, the more your fire can lift. Love seeing the other one on Amber Jones. Yeah, man, it's it's been such a pleasure over the years to just be able to, you know, really know these guys and, and work with them and just, you know, be on 
similar level. We'll just hang out with his friends, you know? It's just, it's, it's always been really cool. You know, especially for me, you know, airbrushing was more, especially in the 80s and 90s, more of a California thing, you know, with cars, and it just was more known for, so to speak, and for this East Coast kid to start doing all the work out there, I've been fortunate enough to do and meet people I've done, it's been, it's been awesome. Now, Australia, i got to get my butt out there sometime. That's going to have to happen at some point. I think the first time I met Dan was at SEMA, actually. I remember you had this really cool um, ball painting. Probably, probably not much bigger than this. Um, it was a vampire girl, and she kind of had like blood on her mouth and stuff. That one was, was awesome. I remember that one. You should try it. Yes, yeah, so I'll look that up. Distiller's Edition. Is that more of a bourbon whiskey or is that a scotch? If it's too scotchy, I don't like it. I don't like the peat kind of... Um, I don't like the peatiness of a scotch. I like a more bourbon whiskey thing. Alright, so while I got this color in, I'm going to do... A little bit of secondary like shadow fire in the background here. Very subtle. And then we're gonna start bringing this thing home. Oh, that was, yeah. Yep. That was, that was in Mike's office, yeah. Hard to believe it's been two years, over two years since you lost Mike. His legacy will never be gone. Like, I still don't ever, I barely use the term true fire when I do this stuff, because for me that's always been Mike's term and phrase and coined it, and so I always call it real fire, realistic fire. I stay away from the true fire terminology. Yeah, 2007-2008. Yeah, Stonehill College. That was a good time, man. Oh, we're getting that set up more and more. So now what you can do is, wherever that purple is, I can go over with the magenta candy out here. And I can tone that a little bit and kind of blend them together. See how that blends them together? I've always liked the magenta candies, but I've always found them, uh, it doesn't matter solvent or, or water, I wish they were a little bit hotter pink than they are. They get a little too red for me. I wish we could get them a little pinker. Maybe a fluorescent would work, but then it just wouldn't hold up as well. All right, all right, let's see what we got. All right, so now, so now you see the same, this is that same pink that I've been using, that Pepto-Bismol pink, but it's going to look really white on this now, okay? Let's see, now that pops. And if, when I go to pure white, it'll pop even more. But I don't want to go to pure white yet. 
Um, you know, I can come up and find some curves to accentuate. Just right there. Right here off the nose. I'll take my pocket graphics and just kind of come up through the stencil. Just hit all these little pieces here. And just really pop these out. And then I'll do some final carving with the black. Got to go in. Put a little Gerald Mendes details. The forehead. Hey James, welcome. So now I'm gonna put the tighter fire, okay? This is that loose to tight, dark to light. So now I've got the purple and the pink. Now this final fire or near final fire will kind of be the brightest sections. And just really kind of Just really build off it just like that fire reference now I'm working in the middle of everything to just really get bright current bit is at 200 but we'll always take more we'll always take more Really get this established. But notice I keep working inside everything. Car rep 2K. Not sure what that stuff is. Hey, Huddy's back. Hey, Zeus, have a great night, man. Thanks for popping in. Much appreciated. So highlights to finding. Yeah, so I kind of do the edges in the centers of the fire. Just like if you look at the reference over there. Now I always forget. Yeah, there. That one. Uh, you can see the, the center is, is the white, the hottest part. And this, this is still that color. It's still this pink. Okay? It's not white. This is... So you want to see how crazy it is? Because everything looks really white right now. So look at the upper camera. That's pink, I'll switch. Okay, see that? That's the color I'm using now, but it looks almost white. This is actual white. See how much different? But if I use this color, this pure white, it's way too much. It's way too strong, okay? Um. Unlike other custom paint colors, OEM. So yeah, Matrix, you can do OEM colors. Uh, PPG, obviously, you can. House Color is the only one that doesn't bother doing the, um, the factory match stuff because you can do it with Matrix or their Sunfire line. Yep. 
Pepto Bisbal Pink. Exactly. So we'll call it Michelle Miller Pink. No, we shouldn't do that. So then I'll go through, it's like, just like the fire, and I'm going to kind of brighten up these guys. The eyebrows, around the nose bridge, and just get that glow over everything. Yeah, I might use, and I might not even use the pure white fully, but sometimes I just use the pure white for the very last little little pick details and like spectral highlights and things like that. Because it's so strong that it just kills it instantly. But like what? So I can come in now if I want to use this. And I'm going to find, where's the edge? Yep, this side. There we go. So if I wanted to find this edge of the skull, like it's just getting a little side lit, I can come in and watch. I can just hit it and just bring that. See how that just brought that edge up? Just gave it that glow. I'm going to hit all the teeth. Is the car up stuff the can stuff? I haven't messed with it. I mean, I've done the can stuff from Spray Max, which works really well. I still love good old, you know, because I have the spray booth, so I'm always going to use, you know, mix it up in the gun. About the pinch, if I was just in the studio, yeah, the can stuff would be great. Michelle, you coming to the rendezvous in a couple weeks? I didn't know what your status was on that. But see how fast it starts to come to just being nice and bright. And, and now I want to get this fire from underneath here. Just really pop that out of there. Boom. That was some little sparks come out, little flood strokes. Maybe from behind, let's go from behind these teeth here, out. Just pop it. See how that just really gives that glow and I'll soften that edge up a little bit. Cool, see you in a few weeks. Yeah, I'll have to mess with it. I'll have to get a hold of some and, like I said, cause I still have my, you know, spray booth in my old shop that I go, I gotta do some big stuff, I go down there. Um, so many of my bikes are done by other shops now that I just do the artwork so I don't clear as much as I used to yeah I've heard that about the car stuff I, I don't know how much harder it is like solids wise I'll have to mess with that and see um, versus like an actual catalyzed 2K, but I haven't seen what the solids content is. Yeah, speed clear. Best speed clear I've used, and I've used DuPonts, I've used PPGs, I've used everyone's. I've had the best luck 
and the best durability with House of Colors Rocket Clear. Other companies have been close, but I haven't had anyone that touches the clarity and consistency and buffability of it, like just how it is overall. Camco's was good. I'm sure the Orion's very similar. Um, you know, they're all good stuff. You know, they all work well. My best results has been the Rocket Clear. I've had the least dieback with it and the best buffability with it. And I don't use a lot of Rocket Clear. I don't, you know, there's one thing that doesn't change is chemistry. So if you speed clear up, there is a sacrifice somewhere. It either get more brittle, not as flexibility, or loose of luster, or whatever. You know, nothing beats a good, like, regular slow dry or normal clear cure. Especially if you're building, like, man, some of my stuff is, you know, six, eight, you know, eight, twelve coats of clear, depending if we got a lot of tape out edges and stuff. So, um, I definitely recommend that. Okay, so let's do the final darks. Yep, I tried that. The Deltron DCU 2021. Yeah, it's nice clear. Like my favorite clear clear overall. Hey Dan, appreciate you popping in. Thanks brother. Hope we get together in the next year or so. Be good to see you. Um, Yeah, like my favorite overall clear is House Colors UC20. I mean, uh, the USC01 show clear. By far the wettest looking clear in the way it lays down for me has been that. Okay, so this has the black in it, so it's that same. Well, Orion clears are just out, so I wouldn't, I don't know yet. Need a little bit more time in the fires before I claim that personally. And I like, I thought, I've always thought PPG was overrated and way overpriced. <laughs> Good stuff. Great stuff. I just, you know, I always thought the vibrance was ridiculous. And House of Color was, I thought, better. Well, you know, PPG used to say as good, but I always thought the clarity was better. And it was way cheaper. Actually, I'm really interested to try this new uh, this new water base. Dave was talking about the UV clear, the UV cure stuff. Sounds really interesting. Looking forward to messing with that and seeing how that is because that's definitely a lot of the tech behind it. Yeah, I've, I Michelle, I couldn't agree more. Just price wise, it's it's great stuff, but it ain't worth. Sometimes two to three times what House of Color or other brands are. It's really not. Daniel, you're not. Are you coming to the rendezvous? Gerald, is Daniel coming? But see how that black mixed with the purple really 
And that's the color. It's not black. Again, you use super black, it's going to be too much. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I haven't done the epoxy um, thick clear. I know Gerald's done quite a few of his panels. Gerald, you did the epoxy, like, yeah, tabletop type clear. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Go get some work done, Daniel. Thanks for popping in. It's really appreciated. Um, Dan, you ever need an assistant teacher? I'd love to come out. Alright, so now I'm going back with the magenta, balancing everything out, and then we'll go in with the final white, that brighter white, and just finish it off. Because now I can tone, I have enough contrast here where I can wash over with the candy magenta or the illustration magenta, and I can still see all the tones. And I don't have it up here, and I should have brought some. A lot of times I'll do a little bit of purple pearl in here. And that was a trick I learned from Mike using uh, House Color PBC 43, I believe it was, uh, the P uh, Passion Purple. And I would, like, thin that down and do a wash over it. With that, it was outstanding. As we get to the winding down stage, the bid still is at 200 unless I miss something. Magenta illustration out. So now this final white, you'll really notice how pure white really pops off. See how much it pops off? It really brightens things up and gives it that hot spot. That's why I don't use it to the very end. Uh, Michelle, I'm so far as your Iron Man helmet. So this is why you wait to the last minute to do that brightest white because it really just gives it that that pop, especially like the teeth. So that just gives it that wet look, that nice shine. And if it's too strong in areas, you can always tone it back. Again, I like the way that edge looked. Just that little rim lighting. 
and just pop that corner of the skull out right there. Yeah, that, see how that white was out? That final white, but if you use it too early, it's too strong. I get a little too strong on that tooth. I gotta turn that out. And now I'll hit some of these hot spots in the fire. You see that? That's where you get that pop. But if you put it too early, you don't get it. That's where you get the pop from. Sparks flying. Those little flood strokes. We can brighten a little area or two. Thanks, honey. Got the fire come right out of that. See that? That worked out good. Just like it's popping out from behind there. Like it's coming from this eye. Nope, I never sprayed any bleed check. Um, this is the, the illustration opaque white. Um, and I've used very little reducer. Actually, I didn't use any reducer in the candies. So I'm really not getting a lot of bleed, especially because of that new mixtures. Um, if I was to use, if I put a lot of reducer in here, then that would probably bleed through. But uh, I don't use the 4040 bleed check sealer. If I didn't have five of your skulls already, I'd bid on this one. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yeah, you gotta leave some from some other people now and again. It's the right thing to do. Well, 30 something years of doing it, it becomes like, Sign your name on a piece of paper sometimes. But yeah, I just like that that nice bright pop. And again, I could work this for hours more, man. I could do a little more details and brighter things and little bone textures. This, you know. We're gonna we're gonna dive in a lot deeper on this project at the Everest Rendezvous coming up in a few weeks because we are gonna do a version of this at the rendezvous. And you'll see what I'm talking about there. Now I'm just gonna turn a few things back. This is back to the candy. And sometimes with the pink fire, I'll clear it and then see if it needs anything more. Because whenever you clear it, sometimes the messages, the messages, <laughs> the colors kind of start to merge a little bit and look a little different. So sometimes I'll go back through and retone some things after the first round to clear. If there's anything I'm not digging 100%. So if anyone's interested, get your final bid in now. If not, this is going to Mr. Warlock. I'll give everyone to the end. We're at 200. I want to thank everyone for popping in tonight. I think we got two more feeds before the rendezvous. And that's it. Not that that's it for feeds, but before we take a little break. a little bit yeah Gerald I'm the same way sometimes I purposely will over brighten things at this stage 
because I know when I clear it, they'll kind of melt together a little bit and it'll look a little different. So, and I don't sweat that. You just let that happen. And let the magic happen. Uh oh, Michael is at. Two twenty-five. And we will. Thank you, honey. And he's just re-upping his first bid. Oh, there we go. Our locks at two fifty. <laughs> Down to you two. Da, 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 da. Where are we going here? <laughs> Purple candy. Oh, this is the magenta candy. I'm just gonna go do some final toning. Here, two seventy-five. Tone between the magenta candy and the purple candy. You know, I'm going to do more purple candy down towards this side. I'm just going to darken this side more, and that way the fire really pops. No, this is not 12 by 18. This is a not um, 8 by 12, I believe it is. It's either 8 by 12 or 9 by 12, but I think it's 8 by 12 is the panel size. Okay, so we're at a final bid, I think, of 275. If Warlock wants to up it, he can. Anyone else is out at this point, just between you guys. Um, so right now we're at Michael at 275, and we're going to sign this thing. So that's going once. Well, we're going to delay here, going twice. This is looking like the final result. Warlock is at 300. Three hundred going once. Going twice. 2022. And we'll put some couple little white highlights using the pen and the eye. Do we hear 325? If we don't hear 325 from Michael, we're going to call this at. at the uh, 300 so best of the final right now and that'll be it gentlemen which i appreciate like i said i'm going to go in here and i'm going to um, oh, oh. <gasps> saved it <laughs> it's dropping my everett yeah, this was fun, man. The pink one was fun. I was a little nervous about doing this one live, actually. So because I have a delay, I'm going to give Michael one more say. And then if not, then I'm going to... Um... Scott is way behind on bids. No? No, 300 is where we were at. 
as far as I know, unless someone did 325, but I don't think we did. But I'm just, was, from the time I see them to I respond back, there's like a five to 10 second delay. So I gotta give a little extra time. But I think right now, um, if, if, if Mike wants to freeze, he could be done and Warlock will take it. Um, I want to just give him that opportunity. Whoever gets it is going to get an awesome panning. And like they all know, both these guys have gotten pannings from me. We always add a lot more into it after the fact. Awesome, Michael. I appreciate it. Thank you, Warlock, very much. You both are gentlemen. Thank you for the support. Like I said, I'm going to go through and I'll put some... Uh, Put some more pearl on here. Like we'll do a little fire coming off the signature. Now it's really, really something different. Thank you so much for popping in. Hope you guys give this one a try. Um, if you're interested, go over to tattoosmart.com. Their pile of skulls is really bitching. Um, it's a nice, just a nice catalog and worth the money. Super high res. Um, I definitely recommend it. And play around with some of these colors and pearls and all that fun stuff. And we're going to call this one a night. Oh, well, not yet. Wait, wait, wait. What do I see? I need a little bit more. So right here, there's a little bit of separation right there. And we will go from there. Yeah, definitely, if you like this video... Definitely go over, like, and subscribe. Share this with other people. Let people know we do this every week. The more people that come in, the better this is for me. And we're going to keep this thing going. And we got summertime coming up. we got the Everest Rendezvous coming up in a few weeks. So I hope to see you all there. And we're going to have some really cool projects. Uh, we've got... So from right now, we're doing like a bomber project. I think we're doing that style. We're going to do some flags and maybe an eagle head. We're going to do the fire and flames. We've got a whole bunch of stuff cooked up. Me and Rhino's uh, class, the Everest Rendezvous. So thank you all for tuning in tonight. Have a great evening, great weekend. See you all next week. Have a good one. Bye.